is your host, Emma Ruschak. I'm here with my wonderful friend, Natalie Gustorkin. And I completely just wrote your, your last name again. Oh, but I love welcome. the way you say it, Melissa. How are you doing today? Good in yourself? Well, um, with everything going on around us, I would say I'm feeling thankful because I'm healthy and... Uh, I hope you're healthy too, Melissa, and so are all our listeners. My warm regards to you, your family, Myron, everyone in the United States, our neighbors, and uh, I think that um, I'm doing well. And yes, you got my family name right. Remember, I told you I love oh, yes. food, so I we should start with right. restaurant, restokian, and then you put I-A-N, like each and every Armenian. So that's it. Here you go. <laughs> I did it right. See, I was you so worried. You do it right. <laughs> <laughs> but we talk a lot. We're we're friends outside of the radio, but you just a wonderful being a life coach and got certified oh, yes. for this. Yeah. yeah, you know, I think that it's the it's the best level that I'm taking now that I'm uh, a Canadian award-winning author, and my business coach advised me to take this step forward to become a life coach and uh I didn't even know anything about coaching, and I didn't know what it is like, and uh, I had no idea that uh, it could um, in some ways um, change my life or uh, help me. Uh, but in many ways, uh, I I think that um, it's very important for us to know where is our vocation. Um I love what I'm doing, uh, and I'm still learning. It's something new for me, and it's very interesting because uh, when you hear the word life and coach and you put them together, like you wonder, is this person going to lead my life? Is she responsible? There's so many ins and outs, (laughs) and each life coach has their own style. I've learned this with working with several and talking to several and, you know, I have you as my wonderful friend and oh, you can always you. give me a, I'm going to coach you, Melissa. I'm going to coach oh. you. Do you trust You're me? You're more than <laughs> well. Well, I think that um, for, uh, for now, uh, everything is uh, going so smooth because I'm learning and uh, um, I am um, getting prepared to uh, get my uh, ICF uh, degree certificate, which is International uh, Coach Federation um, degree, which is like internationally accepted life and wellness coach. And uh, I'm studying with um, Canada Coach Academy with Natalie, Andrew, and um, my coordinator, Roberta, and uh, we're doing good. And I'm I'm learning a lot of things. And the most important thing that I'm learning is that Coaching is very important for people, and uh, it just freaks out a lot of people nowadays. And uh, we have a wonderful group that I'm working with, and everyone, they come from different cultures and different professions. And uh, I'm the only author that published a book. I'm the only one that has a, a television show, had a television show, or was a journalist. But all of them, they're so interesting. They are all like um, – um, Businesswoman, they work in stock market, and they are teachers uh, and uh, directors of schools, and it's very amazing. Even mothers, and it's very interesting that all of us are women, and that's like uh, we're just uh, taking over uh, the world, Melissa. Well, yes, very we to are. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Yeah, you know why? Because it's very funny. Because I said like. Coach and I, I told my my business coach. I said I don't want to go there. I, I don't want to do it because for me it's like um, I, I can't do it. I don't think that's it's a part of my agenda. I will just keep on like writing and as a public speaker. I had three now. Um, I had three uh, public speaking invitations to attend to at um, for Desjardins Bank, but uh, unfortunately there were three places that they were all canceled because of uh, coronavirus, uh, this mm-hmm. epidemic uh, nightmare that we're all having and we're very scared of, though we're trying oh, to be oh, funny oh. and happy. Thinking but, uh, of 
a yeah. book signings. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. I'm involved in a book signing. I don't know if you're able to come to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania in August. I oh, think it's, uh, we'll see how it goes. I, I will be delighted, yeah. and it will be an honor for me to come um, to your book signing, honestly. I would love to. No, but I, I, I was thinking more you also being there. It's s- several authors that are going to be there doing book signings for like two days. Yeah, but I don't know if we can do it because now in Canada we can hardly no. go from one state to the other, and uh, it is very risky. So we'll see what happens till then. Of course, back and forth we're going to stay in touch uh, on the exactly. phone. We, me and you, we chit chat. So uh, we'll see what it. Yeah, like I said, we're very good friends off of the radio, but it just popped in my head before I forgot. It's amazing. Again. Thank you. <laughs> I'm flattered. Of course, I would love to be there. Uh, I mean. Um, uh, I will be still studying, but um, mm-hmm. as a life coach. But I will take a break, of course. And uh, if yeah. uh, it will be a good timing, of course, I will be happy and honored, and a pleasure, and it will be very interesting for me to do it. Uh, you know, it's in life coaching. The difference is that a lot of people like uh, when we talk nowadays, it's like booming now. It's like something like very fashion and up to date, and everybody is becoming a life coach. And I think what differs among uh, life coaches is their life experiences and from Mm -hmm. what perspective they see things and how much things in their lives affected them and this uh, effect, how much it just uh, affects their uh, mind and uh, how much they just control their own experiences but only to empathize and sympathize with the coachee or with the group that they are coaching or one-on-one thing that they are doing, the engagement with the person in front of them. So uh, uh, I think that it's very funny because my life path, like from teacher to radio host and then Mm – actress on stage and then TV actress in Lebanon and the Arab world and then TV show host and journalist in Lebanon and Arab world and here as a Toastmaster, as an award-winning book author, Canadian, and Mm -hmm. uh, motivational speaker and now like a coach. I think that it's a path. Maybe it's my vocation, but I love it. I love doing it. But the only thing that they are teaching us very importantly that we should listen. Uh, I'm having a hard time doing that because... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm like very talkative and hyper, and I should like smooth it down. I'm getting there, my friend. Getting there, Melissa. No, so. you have your own unique style. You don't tone it down. This is how you reach your clients. You use your energy to reach them. Thank okay. you. <laughs> well, I know that it comes from your heart, and I appreciate it. And and it is. I think that we all have different ways, and uh, mm-hmm. I think what the person needs is very important when we're talking about coaching. And uh, I was just wondering. I say, a long time ago. I mean, if you just ask me the question about coaches a year ago, I would just wonder, what does that mean? Why will mm-hmm. somebody go to a coach? I mean, are they very rich? And are they very bored? Are they desperate? No, I don't think like that anymore, not because I'm promoting coaching, no, because as a life coach, I think that it's very important if we need, we have, we want to have these things in our lives, I mean, our personal life, our financial life, our um, physical life, I mean, wellness, because we cannot have a a healthy body when we don't have a healthy mind, and everything, it's related to each other, then they will go to a coach because once we just put balance in our lives, things will just uh, come together um, Mm -hmm. in the right place. Uh, It's different than going to a psychiatrist or psychologist with all my respect to them. It's amazing. I mean, I know they do a great job and they have been doing like from a long time ago from days of Sigmund Freud, the father of psychology. Uh, but mm-hmm. I think it's related more to your present when you're like coaching and psychology is, uh, in psychology, they just go to your past and dig to your past to solve the past in order to have a happy present. But in coaching, it's so much different because uh, we're constantly dealing with the, on the here present. and now. What? Yeah, I mean, on the present to lead them and to take them to the to future 
but let them mm-hmm. just ask the questions themselves. And you don't mm-hmm. give them the answers. You just find out like, oh, I can do this. How about that? Mm-hmm. How about this? And it's very funny because with my business coach, Rami, I used to ask him all the time, why are you asking me? You should give me the answers. He says, no, no, no. What do you think? I'm like, oh. And now that I'm learning and I'm a life coach, uh, soon getting the degree, uh, my ICF degree, I'm like, oh, now I understand what he means because it's very interesting because once you start answering your own questions and finding out, it means that soon you will just, like a baby, you know, on a bicycle, you just hold the bicycle and you train the, a child to mm-hmm. start how to ride a bike, and after a while you let go, and they will ri- they will just uh, ride the bicycle on their own, right? So right. that's the same thing I think that happens with uh, coaches. Oh, my God, I just had the idea. It's good. <laughs> I don't know how <laughs> I thought about it. <laughs> but I think it's like that, something like that, or swimming, everything, you know, mm-hmm. just you help and you let them go and they will continue. And um, that's uh, that's what um, I think uh, the pursuit, uh, to pursue, I mean, uh, your goals in life, you know, when it's related to health, it's related to your goals. It's amazing uh, to have a coach. And uh, I wouldn't be a life coach if I didn't have a coach myself. So I'm learning from my coach. And I'm learning from mm-hmm. the coaches that I'm working with and from my business coach, Rami, and Natalie and Andrew and Roberta, everybody, in order to know how to coach others because uh, I cannot give what I don't have. So, uh, But it's wonderful. Right. I, I, I learned like, a lot from my own life coach, who's also my business coach. Whoa. Yeah. So I, I learned a lot. Yeah, I have my own life coach. He's He's a very good friend of mine. I have to connect you guys because on the business side, he's awesome. And he's also an author. So I'm going to have to connect you guys. Oh, amazing. That's interesting. You never told me about it. So now I'm super, super, super (laughs) impressed, Melissa. Super, 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 super impressed. (laughs) See, he's the one that got me doing these radio shows at high energy. When I first started, I was so scared doing radio shows and talking to people on the phone because I'm an introvert. I don't talk to people. But I love doing these shows. I love it. You know, because you when, give something to yes. others and you inspire yes. them and you you inspire the listeners. And it's amazing to do something that you know that you're making changes in others' lives, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. And, and I I love helping people. That's the whole point of these shows. If they're getting an author's name out there because they wrote a sweet uh, fantasy book for younger readers or because they're teaching through their experiences. I love yeah. connecting readers with authors. I love connecting life coaches with clients. Yeah, that's and, amazing. So, you know, because I was just thinking the other day, I'm thinking, oh, my God, I mean, coaching is helping and they, when they mm-hmm. told me, like, why you wrote your book, I said, I wanted to help women. I wanted to show them what they have. And I think that when you like to help others in life, life will give mm-hmm. back to you people who will help you in return because it's like ping pong, you know, uh, like a ping pong game. And, mm-hmm. um, and it also boosts your energy to give more when you see there's a result and people are so grateful and they are so thankful Whatever is uh, happening and all the help, I mean, I mean, you do a great job. I yeah. love the way that you think. Honestly, if I think that it's it's very like uh, gratifying when we help people because when we inspire them, we help them, and we changes into their lives. It means that mm-hmm. we are doing a lot, and that's very important. I mean, otherwise, what's the importance of humanity? Except wearing exactly. masks nowadays, right? Yeah. How about everything that? Everything has to be behind a mask. I mean, yeah, you know, you know, like I said, oh my God, my book is masks. It's named masks, and now people are using like actual masks to protect themselves. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's kind yeah, of funny. It's, but it's where can funny. everyone? Where can everyone find you? They can find me on Amazon, 
And they can buy, find me on Barnes & Noble. Now on Audible, my book is available, Audible, and it's narrated by my wonderful friend, just like you. She's amazing, Nicole Renee. And uh, it's on Audible um, and iTunes. When they write masks, M-A-S-K-S, Natalie Restokian, N-A-T-A-L-Y Restokian. They can find the Audible. It's everywhere, Amazon. Audible, iTunes, um, and the book, I think that the the book now, it's going to take a long time. Also, it's uh, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, online, it's everywhere. It's over 27 uh, websites, but they can find it ebook. But m- me, myself, I just suggest that they listen to it. Audible, I- I've never listened to Audible before. My first book, my first Audible was my own book because I'm like, I belong to old school and I love like using a book pages and you know underlining sentences and leaving the moment but it's another world like the audible now i'm listening to another book because of uh, that's uh, something i have to do for uh, mm-hmm. as a life coach i'm learning so uh, uh, i'm more and more i'm listening to audible books and it's very important because i think that it just lets you leave the moment and in my book masks when you read the book Masks or listen to it, the way that Nicole Renee just narrated, and I got a uh, gold award uh, three months ago. I don't think that, uh, I think it was before we had the first um, interview about my book, because then my book was a finalist in Washington. Now I got the gold award after the Audible was released. And Amazon, they adapted my book into an audiobook. They Awesome. They took care of everything financially, yeah, and the coordinate did a great job, and yeah, they did it, and uh, they are, uh, we have, uh, they have the exclusive rights of my Audible, but it's amazing, for me, it's not how much I make, it's to bring out the voice of so many who do not dare to speak up, and masks, it's Another kind of mask that people are wearing, not the Wuhan mm-hmm. for coronavirus, <laughs> but because they're trying to protect themselves from other things, mostly women. And mm-hmm. nowadays we're wearing actual masks. I'm not wearing any masks, but um, I don't go out. I freak out a lot. And um, Yeah, I do the same thing. I, I, I don't do well out of my house. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Studio. You know what I think. I, I'm not scared to die, and I think this is something that's going eventually to <clears throat> go away because it's not the end of the world. And it's very funny because uh, on Saturday I was talking to my cardiologist, Dr. Peter Bogatti, and I said, "Where are you calling me from?" He was calling me for an um, uh, for a question for my visit or something, um, and I'm not. Are you in your clinic, Dr. Peter? He said, yes. I said, oh, aren't you scared? He said, why? I said, because of coronavirus. He said, no. Uh, and he, I said, how come? He said, because I'm not going to die a thousand times, Natalie. I'm like, oh, my God, Dr. Peter, I'm going to take that sentence and use it. He says, go ahead, use it. I said, do you give me the copyright? He said, sure. We doctors say it all the time. I'm not going to die thousand slashes. I'm like, oh, I never heard about that. I don't know that. I didn't know that. And that's true. But because if we're going to die, we're going to die, you know. And I don't, I don't think that we're going to die. It's the fear, everything they're putting on social media. It's freaking us more because everything is like so negative and it's pulling us down. And we can rarely see things that are like um, funny things. And we need that. We either see so... Um, reluctantly vulgar things or criticism, scary things. I'm not saying that they shouldn't put things like that in order to keep us like um, uh, healthy and staying home. No, I'm not saying that. But at the same time, we have to have high spirits. And when you go to the uh, to news and everything is related to COVID and everything, the pictures on all websites is about masks and how many people died, whatever happened. I mean, mm-hmm. it just kills you inside. So I don't listen to the news. I watch Netflix. I watch Amazon Prime. And I read. I work with my business coach. And uh, tomorrow I'm going live on my Facebook um, to, work with, uh, to talk with my friends and fans. It's going to be in Arabic, so you're not going to understand. But it, I promise you I'm going to do it in English next time. And after that, I'm going to do it in Armenian. 
So, <laughs> but uh, the thing is that the funny thing is that, I mean, we have to do other things because it just consumes us the fear. Exactly. And, um, right. I mean, we are so consumed by fear right now. Yeah, and we are. Yeah. It, it, it's hard. Okay, it's really, really, really hard. Not to be consumed by the fear, but at the same time, we can't let fear consume us. Exactly, exactly. Because if you, I think that, I mean, um, the word, you should stay home itself, it's like toxin, you know, and mm-hmm. we should stop thinking about it and we say, we're happy to stay home. Okay, we're not happy. I mean, I'm home most of the time. I don't care. And I'm happy because my husband is with me 24-7. I'm like, where are you? Where are you? I'm so happy because he's with me. He's like, oh, my God. <laughs> and uh, and the funny thing is that um, we both cannot go out. He only goes out uh, to bring food. And I clean everything with Clorox. And it's it's the worst smell for him. But for me, it's fine. I mean, uh, it doesn't. Yeah. I don't mind. So the thing is that in your head, I mean, just the word should, it's so powerful. It's like, like it creates this negative pressure of guilt. And, um, I mean, and you really like there is this disappointment and negativity that it just keeps on letting you battle with this idea that you should stay home, you should stay home, you should stay home. I say, you know what? I enjoy staying home. I enjoy watching Netflix. I enjoy texting Melissa. I enjoy looking at the dress that she sent me the other day on LinkedIn, the photo. It was pretty. And, <laughs> and I enjoy giving my opinion to Melissa about her dress. And if we think like enjoying even though we are not, and like a lot of people might say, what is Natalie talking about? It's not what I'm talking about. It's the way that we will be able to train our minds at least 0.02% to accept, to jump from the word should and say, I choose to stay home. I'm okay staying home. Then a lot of change mm-hmm. will happen. Um, that's my opinion because it just gives like uh, this commitment that you're committed to this thing, not because it's an obligation, but you just choose to do so. And it makes a great difference. It I'm does. talking as a coach now. <laughs> I but my coach coaches me, so I, I coach others, but uh, my coach coaches me. So it's like uh, I think like it's three hundred sixty degree. Yes, that's what all life coaches do. We coach yes. each other because there might be something that we come across that our coach hasn't, or something else. Exactly. You know. Exactly. We never know where the conversation is going to go. But we yes. always coach each other because we might come up with a client that has some off the wall fear or phobia or something that's going on. Yeah, in painful life. experience that we haven't been mm-hmm. through and we don't know how to help the yeah. person. Exactly. Yeah, I mean it happens. I mean, I I had a client a couple years ago, and it took six months for me to convince him he needed to walk away from the situation he was in. We kept going back and forth. I'm like, okay, maybe I'm not making sense. So I was going back and forth with my coach on how to present what's going on. But I got to the point where he finally had to walk away. Well, you did it. It doesn't matter how, but you did it. Yes, and that's just, what concerns us because we have to have um, patience, we have to have um, the sense of humanity mm-hmm. and mindfulness, and mm-hmm. uh, and and most of them they they don't have like depression and anxiety. They just don't really know what they want from life. And exactly. Most of us we don't know. Sometimes I say, "What do I want from life? Now what?" And because if we just lose having a goal in life, I think that life becomes meaningless. And nowadays, mm-hmm. I think that everybody is having one goal, to stay alive. Right. And trust me, I think that we're going to stay alive. We're going to just 
past this stage. It's just a phase that we're going through, all of us. It is. It's something that we all have to go through. Unfortunately, it's not going to be a quick thing. But eventually it will pass. It it will pass. Even the darkest night will come to light. So it's just going to be time and, you know, and and it's very funny that a lot of people like just uh, have the concept of this virus itself. Like, oh, it's something political and everything. I mean, seriously, people, just give up. Stop analyzing things. And everybody on social media, they all just go there and talk about stuff. And some of them they don't even know what they're saying. And others are listening to them and freaking out. So if you don't have the right information, just don't do it. Exactly. Is it hard? Everybody has something to say, like, okay, eat a lot of garlic, and then what? My husband sleeps in the next room. (laughs) (laughs) We have so many things going on, it's not even funny anymore. It's just... Yeah, because, 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 like, a lot of times, I mean, a lot of times I see people just wearing masks, and Mm -hmm. I see they're using it in the wrong way, and... They say a lot. I mean, if you don't know how to use a mask, don't put it on. If you're healthy, don't put it on. That's what they're saying. I don't know if in the States now they're saying something else. But till he, till now, today in Canada and Quebec, I mean, they are doing everything. I mean, the Canadian government, they are doing everything to help us. They are doing an amazing job, amazing job. Uh, I mean, uh, the Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, and the, and the whole government, everyone, they're in every way, they are doing everything, all the precautions they're taking, and legally they're they're doing all that they can in their power um, to just uh, take care. I mean, they cannot solve it, but at least to uh, help people and secure things. Uh, but uh, the other day, I mean, somebody sent me a video, and she's putting the mask down and putting up on her mouth. I'm like, I called her. I said... Um, I want to tell you something. I studied health and nursing. I have a degree, but uh, I learned at least as a nurse that once the mask is down, it's contaminated. You don't put it up. It has nothing to do with COVID-19. It's like simple logic. And some people, most people don't know it because they're not in medical field. But if you don't know how to use it, go to internet, see on the medical (laughs) website how they use it, or don't do it because you're risking your life more. And it's like well, a fashion thing now, I think, more than it's like about helping the mm-hmm. mask. So. The thing is, here in the U.S., with, there's a thing with the mask. A lot of the hospitals, the nurses are only given one mask for That's the entire very shift. Sad. That's very sad. It, they it, are doing an amazing job. I mean, they are angels. Yes, they are. I have a cousin that's a nurse, and it's like you have one mask per room or per time you're with the patient. And that one mask total for a shift, it boggles my mind so much, and I worry about her. Well, you know? I think it's very funny because um, when when I finished here health and nursing, when I came to Canada, I studied health and nursing. I don't know why. Don't ask me. I'm a dork. I love studying. So, But I, I never worked because I don't speak French, so I didn't go to work. I had to speak. Speak French, and it's a, it's my fifth language. I mean, come on. I mean, I'm not going to learn fifth language now. I love to study things, but not languages. So, um, and uh, and one a week ago, my husband started coughing. I'm like, oh my god, you have coronavirus! I freaked out, Melissa. I swear, Melissa, if you sh- you would have seen my face. <coughs> I was freaking out. I said, okay, we have to call 911. I didn't even know where to call. I called, and the second I called somebody, hello, uh, my husband, I think he has coronavirus. Okay, call 811. 811, what is that? I hung up and called back again, 811. We had to stay on the line, not a lot, I mean like 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. No, less, mm-hmm. 12 minutes, and somebody answered, and she's a nurse. And at that moment, I realized that in ethics and codes in nursing, they teach you that when you are helping someone or treating someone as a nurse, they should not be related to you in any way because you will not be like fully concentrated on uh, the health problem because emotionally you will be so much involved. I just learned it 
and I did the stages. I got my diploma, but I never used it. But at that moment, when I called the nurse, I mean, I know the, all the theoretical words to say. I mean, my husband has congestion. Uh, how is his cough? He has cluster headache because it's a seasonal thing that happens. What kind of medication he takes? It's like, I'm blank. She's asking me questions like, mm, mm. I'm like, oh, my God. And <laughs> I couldn't say anything. And then in the end, she says, no, no, he, it's nothing. Uh, it's, uh, it's his allergy. Does he take allergy pills? Allergy pills, allergy pills. I'm like, oh, my God. I, I couldn't remember anything. I freaked out. And it's very funny. They say don't preach what you don't um what you cannot do <laughs> and at that moment i was like oh my god i, I, I couldn't explain how hard it was uh, but um, we're okay we're fine yes and how are you doing I, I, guys you're freaking out too you uh, have like a well, six months food at the house like you know cans and everything scared it's the I, end of the world i do but you know i don't say my uh, medical stuff very often, but I will say I did test positive for COVID a couple of days ago. I've been on antibiotics for three days. I sound they wonderful. They give you antibiotics? Mm-hmm. I have but antibiotics. That's very interesting because they give antibiotics for when it's bacteria and coronavirus. It's a virus. It's not bacteria. It doesn't kill. Here in the U.S. Probably they give it with an- Tylenol. Uh, t- take it with Tylenol. I'm on three different antibiotics and um, something for my bronchioles because <clears throat> I also have underlying medical conditions. Oh, and but they I'm not you, scared. There's another medication that they are uh, taking. It was for malaria. It's uh, yeah. He, uh, um, what is this? Chloroquine. Yeah. Hydrochloroquine, yeah. right? With yep. zinc. Yep. You're That's taking that too. That's what I'm on as well. And vitamin C. So, and vitamin C. Are you going to be okay? I know you'll be because fine. I sound wonderful, You right? have the medication. I have the medication. And I'm and here doing the show with you. So with me. I, with you. My good Imagine. friend. Imagine. I, I, know, I, know, I know what it means. It means that, you know what it means? It means that life goes on and we don't see how many people are just surviving. And it's just uh, a complicated flu for people who have very serious problems. They're just saying, oh, how many people died? No. I mean, they're just saying that, I mean, it's like 0.04% people are dying. Before, they weren't saying like that. I mean, in India, there were only seven people who were just, I don't know, a couple of days ago, it was like Dr. Uh, Berg, I think his name on uh, YouTube, he was just saying that seven people, uh, they had coronavirus, and seven of them were healed, all of them. Uh Uh But I don't know why they're scaring us. I think they are scaring us. They want to teach us a lesson. You people of the world, you should stay scared. <laughs> because <it's laughs> when we tell you stay home, you stay home. It's it's. I mean, it's not the virus is scaring us. It's everything else except the virus is scaring us more. I don't know what yeah. it is. It's concept of the news is scaring us. Look at I you. Know. I mean, you, I, I you're amazing. I hate the news. I hate the news. I don't watch the news at all. I have my wonderful boyfriend. He watches the news, and I didn't respond to an email. And we have a long distance relationship before this COVID, whatever. Mm. But um, he knew something was wrong because I have a pattern every night before I go to bed. I write him a good night letter. And I I didn't write it. I felt so horrible. And I went in the hospital the next day. And I was like, I wasn't going to tell you. What were your signs and symptoms? Uh, Let's see. I started out with the joint pain, the congestion of the chest, sore throat, running a fever. Couldn't breathe. I'm now now touching my forehead as you're speaking. (laughs) Yeah. Don't don't do that. You know? (laughs) But... It started off, and I got on the phone with my doctor through a video conference with her. And she's like, I'm not going to have you go take a test yet. Let's just get you on the antibiotics because underlining conditions. I know you have underlining conditions. So she started me on 
the antibiotics and the medication before she sent me to the ER the next day. Mm. Where I came back with rapid testing for positive, and that was scary as all get out, but, you know. I'm sorry to hear that it was positive, but I'm happy that you are healing, and I know that you're going to heal very well. And because you're taking your medication, that's what matters. People, yeah. they have it, they don't even know they have it. Right. And they think that, it's flu, and they don't take it seriously, and they die. Yes. That, I that, mean, you can even die from the flu. Any, anything, you, if you don't take it seriously. It's not about coronavirus, right? Right. I'm not talking as a die. doctor. I'm just talking as a person with logic, right? Mm-hmm. Right. If you're bleeding mm-hmm. somewhere, and you don't stop the bleeding, you just bleed out, mm-hmm. and you die, right? Exactly. You have to be able to take responsibility for your health. You have to take yes. your health serious. If you don't have your health, you don't have anything. And that's yes. not me talking as a doctor. It's or one of the dimensions else. of wellness, yeah. Mm-hmm. Our physical, it, it, which is related to our mental. If you're mentally accepting that something's wrong with you, you'll do it. But if you mm-hmm. keep on denying, then you're in trouble. Exactly. You have denial. To take re- yeah. I don't take anything for denial with my health. I right on top of it because I've survived so much and I refuse to give up and not do anything now. I'm so happy that you're doing well, Melissa. Yep. So, but I think we're almost out of time. Thank you very much for this wonderful interview. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. I love talking to you on the radio. I do. I love talking to you all the time. We always have interesting conversations. Yeah, and I want to thank also the radio show, um, the radio itself, the Media Hour radio show Mm -hmm. that you're hosting. Mm -hmm. And uh, also I want to thank uh, Myron, Grace, for this wonderful opportunity. And uh, it's always a pleasure talking to you and um, to all the fans and all the friends. And if they want to reach out to me, they can contact me via Instagram, Twitter, my Facebook, my website, and they can get the audio book or they can even contact me if they want. Mm-hmm. Uh, Natalie Restokian, and they have it, I mean, uh, on the website, uh, everything, all the information. And the name of my uh, book is Masks. Mm-hmm. And thank you so much. And uh, I wish you a very happy, happy Sunday because it's Palm Sunday. So, um, Happy it Sunday is. for everybody. Yeah, I right? completely forgot until we talked earlier. Today it was Sunday. I was looking. This is my brain right now that's full of mush. I went downstairs looking for the mail because I'm expecting packages, and there's no mail. I'm like, where's the mail at? And then you call and go, it's Happy Palm Sunday. I'm like, Happy oh, Palm Sunday, Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> that and Happy Palm so Sunday, everyone. Regardless yes. of what we believe in, regardless of our religions, yes. regardless of our yes. races, regardless of where we come from, the most important thing that we are all children of this world and we are connected, we have the same species. And, uh, right. and I'm very sad that this is happening, but on the other hand, um, this epidemic situation that we are going through is bringing the world together and everybody helping each other, and um, we can see the bright side of it. And that's wonderful. It is. Yes. It's so wonderful to see people actually working together with this. this yes. Across the globe. It's not just individual. It's a global It's a global yes. connection and power yes. and uh, humanity. Yes. But thank you for everything. I love you so much, Melissa. And I'm so happy for having this conversation with all the listeners. And I wish mm-hmm. you all a very, very, very beautiful night and stay safe stay home but go out and shop safely take yes and get a lot of food and vitamin c <laughs> <laughs> thank Very you so true. much and thank you, uh, Natalie. god bless you god bless thank you, you too, Natalie. Melissa. and i'll talk to you again later sure, of course we're gonna so, talk <laughs> of course that's what we're doing. <coughs> sorry what we do but I will talk to everyone and cinnamon for and listener, water. Remember? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I will talk to everyone later and happy Sunday. Thank you. You too. Happy Palm Sunday, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye.